welcome to the History Hunters channel here on YouTube. Almost everything you see here is about the Second World War, the history from that time frame and the relics that we can recover from the time when the whole world was at war. I'm heading out to a very, very, very special location. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that later. But you can see here, this is your typical German forest where the last battlefields of the war was and uh, a lot of incredible small stories following the events of that period of time. But I'm gonna walk for a couple of kilometers over to a location and uh, I'm gonna share a little history with you and uh, I'll let you in on a very very special secret. On my way here in the forest you can see here that the bomb crater at least an artillery grenade crea uh, crater and the area here is littered with that. There are hundreds of them here in the forest and you can also find small locations where the soldiers hid and tried to defend themselves the last days of the war. That's an appropriate first finding of today. As history, things vanish away. Um, this is the uh, point end of a cartridge, looks like a MGR K98. This is all you normally would find here. This is the leftovers of the horrific things that happened here. So, um, time will take care of all the traces, just give it enough time and history will make it disappear. Maybe that was the casing for the cartridge, I don't know, 19, um, I'll take a picture of it, it's 1937 P163. That is a signal flare on the top here as a find in the surface. It's a red flare. It's quite amazing to see that things are still just on the top here after so many years. And here is our first proof of the fighting with the live ammo and uh, it's red marked. This is probably the uh, MGOK knight that you can see it's got some small scars there. So it's been discarded, it haven't been used, haven't been fired. So all the way since that time, been down there in the ground and who knows who dropped it there. Here's another flare, yeah, typical for the Germans. have like a serrated edge here and a flat edge there and there are some numbers on it there it is T no F let me zoom in there's the code of it they must have used this during the last days when they were running like wild to get in safety there is my first coin let me see that looks very very much like a uh, could it be? Um, I'm not sure. That's quite a surprise. A one franc, 1942. The back will clean up just as well, but I don't have the resources to do it here. But that is so right. This is probably something being dropped by. Either one of the Germans having it as a souvenir, or it could be one of the Allied coming through here after the war was over. Alright, I'll give you some background info of what I'm doing here. Uh, a couple of years ago in Germany, uh, you see a drawing here, I'll tell you more about that in a bit. A couple of years ago, I met an elderly man who runs a cafe, and he was very interested in the wartime and the wartime histories. 
and he shared a very special uh, story with me and that was that uh, on the last few weeks of the end of the war a lot of this is happening on the eastern front in Germany a lot of civilians and German uh, soldiers would flee from the Russians and by doing that they had to sort of uh, put themselves in danger and travel very fast both in daytime and nighttime to try to escape the uh, savage Russians attacking from the south the savage uh, Russian war machine would sort of like just move over everything kill whatever they saw so the civilian ran like crazy and they caught up with the army and the uh, SS and all that thing and um, what basically happened was that they came from the south there they had to cross one of the uh, big uh, roads they crossed the road and then they went along a four or five kilometers long road till they came to what is known in Germany as the Spinner. Spinner is a road uh, across in the forest and this Spinner has five connective roads and they had to pass through this special point here and at this point here I have a picture that I've seen from this elderly man there were some in the region of 15 to 25,000 people collected there for about one day before they started traveling and decided which way to go so some of them went south some of them went west and some of them actually managed to escape uh, through a very narrow passageway that I'm going to show you later so what I'm actually doing I'm following this trail from where the uh, both the civilians and the soldiers went and also doing a lot of research in this area here so after that I'm going to travel west and I'm going to pick up the lead in a very very special location some other place so that's basically what I'm doing and pays off to get to know people and do the research and then you have a special place to go and uh, look for history uh, it's a reflector from one of the flashlights probably snuck around during the dark hoping for that the Russians wouldn't see them and they had the, the red the green glasses over here kind of make you think and wonder how it would be like to be in that position you know we wander around safe and sound every day we travel we go on holidays but how was it <coughs> sorry how was it to being out here during that time when the bombs and aircraft, projectiles, machine guns and cannons, everything trying to get at you. So it must have been incredibly hard. That's another flare. This time it looks like a LDN with a UPI. UPI, I'm not too sure. The main thing for me here is not to find, you know, fantastic relics. The main thing is actually to be you know, be at this location, feeling the ambience and uh, sort of just appreciate your life that you have today, considering what they went through. So I'm happy with things like this. This is perfect for me. You know, this one here was meant to hit somebody. It's quite incredible to see it here. This was fired by someone who wanted to make harm to another person. That's strange. We have a foxhole, see under here, the troops will always have rear guards taking care of uh, making sure that the advancement kept going and they would dig down in small areas like that and they could cover this whole area of forest here. So that is, uh, I've counted about six or seven of them just around here, so definitely one of these. Seems like the Germans built a sort of a trench here, at least a dug up sort of thing. And under here, I'm finding a ammo spill with several bullets. And uh, probably they were meant to be used, yeah. Not just several, a bundle of them. Have a look. They look like the 
steel casing ones so they are probably very old they are from the last days of the war because they couldn't get hold of brass so they had to make them in steel are there more? yeah it sounds like there are more in here lots of more yeah so that's a ammo dump for you I'll dig a little bit here and see what comes up I got about 10 of them here that's really strange to know that one soldier sat down here I can see that they have been attached to a clip so it's mouse ammunition they sat here and they waited for the enemy to come over that hill ooh that gives me ooh scares me a lot well, I mean another foxhole here I'm not too sure but I think that's the valve for a gas mask a lot of these single man foxholes all over the place. That is a very weird piece of relic. It's a cartridge embedded into a piece of wood. And it's on the floor of the uh, wood here. Unbelievable. This is most likely what the, what most of the uh, casualties were from the heavy shelling from the Russians they had artillery you know hundreds and hundreds of guns just shelling everything in front of, the, of them as they advanced so thousands upon thousands of these here in another foxhole this one the food ration box I'm not too sure which side it's from is it from the Russian or from the Germans could also be a civilian type. This was the only way to get some shelter. You had to dig down. You see here, that is one shelter, and you have another one next to this one. So it's a foxhole for one man. The strange thing is that you basically will find either cartridges, ammo clips, or some food container boxes in these holes here seems like they made a perimeter here because there are like 40 or 50 of them on a row here so they probably made some sort of um, setup to take care of that direction there so you can see they are very very numerous and uh, they're all the same basically just a hole in the ground to take cover and sit and wait for the enemy to come I am basically now uh, in the triangle that I showed you earlier on the picture or the drawing that I made with the sticks on the roadside. So I'm finding a lot of these. That's one or two man foxholes. And these were set up with the perimeter. There are about 40 or 50 of them just around this sort of end of the triangle. So let's make a drawing. Let's say we have, let me see, uh, this is one side of the triangle, this is the other side of the triangle, so it goes down into here, so now there's a perimeter out here, towards here, this is where all the people collected, and uh, this is where I'm now, so this is where they had the perimeter of the, um, with the foxholes covering both this road and that road there. Yeah, I think we have a confirmation here. This is one of the foxholes and on the edge here There is a cartridge There's one that is live cartridges a lot of them again on the edge of a uh, Of a could be a machine gun nest or a place where they had the Rifles So it's just on the rim here and there's a lot of them so they were probably dropped here as they had to flu or fly away from the attackers and uh, that's typically the scenario that you will see down here yeah so it's easy to dig here there's a lot of sand so here you have it pile of uh, probably machine gun ammo just next to this rim of the uh, foxhole.
I don't know what that is. Could be some equipment or whatever. But this is their perspective. And this is all they saw. Waiting for the next shell to come. Waiting for the next aircraft to bomb them. Waiting for the next soldier coming to shoot them. Big shell. So somebody launched out a shell from here. So they probably had a cannon. And uh, since I don't know who shot it, it could be either one, the Russian or the Germans. I think that is one piece of the combination tool of a fork and a uh, spoon. I'm not too sure, but I think it is. This is a uh, gas mask port, the breathing valve. I think the round thing I found is for this piece here. This has been quite an interesting little trip. I have to say thank you very much for joining me. It was a very special moment for me finding this location and uh, it's always very exciting to see if history is the same on the ground as in the books. So this time it was. I found a lot of relics that are sort of uh, fitting together here and I have to say very very sad story this place is but at the same time very very learning for but i'm off to the next location so i'll see you in my next video from germany until then have a nice day and smile